Thank you very much. Um, yes, I'm Lucy Crompton Reed, and I'm the Chief Executive of Wikimedia UK, which is the national chapter for the global Wikimedia open knowledge movement. And we believe that open access to knowledge is a fundamental right, but also that it's a driver for social, educational and economic development. So we work with the Wikimedia projects to enable people and organisations to contribute to a shared understanding of the world through the democratic creation, distribution and consumption of knowledge. The most well known of the Wikimedia projects is obviously Wikipedia, but the projects also include the media repository Wikimedia Commons, the free digital library Wikisource, and the open structured database Wikidata, amongst another of others. Um, and I've spoken at a few of these conferences on copyright, but I usually don't go into any detail about Wikipedia because I assume that people know what it is and how it works. But actually, I think it's worth highlighting some facts and figures about the free encyclopedia that anyone can edit. Because Wikipedia is the world's free knowledge resource. It's a collaborative creation that has been added to and edited by millions of people from around the globe since it was created 20 years ago last month. And everyone can edit it at any time. Uh, Wikipedia is offered in more than 55, sorry, in more than 300 languages, and it contains a total of more than 55 million articles. It's the largest collaborative collection of free knowledge in human history, and today its content is contributed and edited by a community of more than 280,000 volunteer editors each month, and it's read more than 50, 15 billion times every month. Wikipedia is, in fact, an extraordinary example of the power and the benefit of the commons. But we also take copyright very seriously. The mission of Wikipedia is to develop neutral educational content under a free content license. And copyrighted imagery or other content can't be defined as free content. Rights are held by the original authors or in some case others. And Wikimedia isn't free to use the work in any way we please. And nor should we be. The UK leaving the EU has risks and opportunities for copyright. As the UK is no longer part of one of the largest blocks, we must make sure that we are aligned enough to avoid being geo-blocked. However, the UK will no longer be bound by the EU's Information Society Directive. We therefore have an opportunity to create an ambitious legislative framework for copyright that supports common-based projects and self-governing communities. Wikimedia is not anti-copyright. However, we want a copyright framework that enables open knowledge and access to information to flourish. There's an opportunity for the UK to attract talent and creativity by adapting and adopting innovation-friendly copyright exceptions. That might include a fair use policy based on the United States model, that's something that's obviously been considered by previous UK governments, but wasn't compatible with EU law. If fair use isn't on the table, then certainly an exception regime needs to include a user generated content exception for online platforms and a text and data mining exception that allows sharing of outputs. But we also have the opportunity to improve the framework for online education. As seen during the COVID-19 crisis, it's important that teachers, parents and students can share materials online safely and easily. Unfortunately, the EU directive allows abusive licensing to take precedence over the new online education exception, but the, EU, the UK can introduce a simple, straightforward and universal online education exception. Safeguarding the public domain is also critical. The latest EU copyright reform contains a public domain safeguard, mandating that digitisations of public domain works aren't covered by copyright and related rights. And with our world leading public museums and archives, it's crucial that the UK adopts a robust public domain safeguard in order to remain amongst the most visible countries when it comes to cultural heritage online. And the, EU, the UK could even improve on the exception in the EU copyright directive, for instance, by including 3D works. And whilst I know people will say that there is already UK guidance from the IPO regarding public domain works, in my experience, the interpretation and application of this is varied at best. Public domain therefore needs codifying into the statute. On a related note, cultural organisations and others need a lot more support and guidance around orphan works um, and clear information and support in applying to the UK's orphan works licensing scheme, rather than simply taking things offline following Brexit, as is currently happening in lots of places to small digital archives um, and other resources. And individuals and organisations need better guidance on what constitutes a diligent search for the author or rights holder of an orphan work, as the current lack of clarity around this leaves people feeling vulnerable to punitive enforcement and less likely to share content. It's clear to me that when it comes to copyright, balanced and evidence-led policy is vital in order to balance the interests of users, rights holders and intermediaries. 
We need to protect fundamental user rights, such as freedom of information and free expression, while also allowing rights holders to exercise their economic rights. The enforcement agenda therefore needs to go hand in hand with an exceptions regime that supports creativity and innovation rather than stifles it. And the interests of all stakeholders, rather than just those with the loudest voices or the deepest pockets, need to be considered as part of a comprehensive review of the regulatory framework for copyright in the UK. Thank you very much for listening and I'm looking forward to the discussion later on this morning. Lucy, thank you uh, very much indeed and there's lots